this is another quick update on my 3D printed um, Polish double Enigma machine. I've made a, a little bit more progress. Um, I've finished printing the lamp board. Uh, this now has a, a little step piece here in the front to, to keep it up at the right level. And what I've done, just to show how this works, is I've temporarily hooked up some some wires just between one of the keyboard switches and one of the lamps just so we can see what it looks like when it lights up um, if you remember I was using these little indicator light uh, indicator lamps these are sort of panel lamp type indicators these are actually 12 volt bulbs but I'm running them at a, at a lower voltage so at the moment you can see here this is actually a, a 6 volt sealed lead acid battery that I could use um, or else what I've actually got it powered off at the moment is six AA nickel metal hydrides. That gives me 7.2 volts. Uh, you can see this just sort of, it's just temporarily hooked up to one of the lamps. So when we press a key, we should see one of the letters light up. And you can see there the Q lights up. Of course, at the moment, it's all just hardwired. So the same letter lights up every time. But what this shows you is you can see the rotor actually moves. As you press the key down, the rotor moves and then the light comes on. You can see there's just a slight delay there. Um, the other thing to notice is because I'm using incandescent bulbs, um, these things rather than LEDs, you get that nice fade in, fade out effect. Um, I prefer that for this sort of machine rather than a, an LED which just comes hard on and then turns off very quickly. Um, what else have I done? I finally got round to gluing the letters on the, the final two rotors and because this is a a, a, a version of the Polish double, uh, in the real Enigma machine the the battery pack actually goes in here. Um, so the real Enigma is used a 4 volt battery. What I'm going to do is what they did on the Polish machine, which is they powered the machine from an external power source and they actually had storage in here for the, the two spare rotors. So I've designed and I'll print up tonight um, the little bracket that goes in here that holds those two spare rotors. So they'll live in there. Um, the plug board, of course, I still need to design and I'm using these. Uh, 6.5 mil sockets, switched sockets. Um, in the real Enigma machine, these would go down in front of the keyboard here, and the box would open at the front, so you can you can stick in the uh, the patch cables. On the Polish machine, they added the the sockets at the back of the machine, so they'll actually sit along here in two rows of 13. So I need to design and print. Uh, the the holder for these sockets so they'll go along the back there there'll also be a couple of connectors for the external power source and I'm just going to use banana sockets and I'll make up cables that go to whatever power source is appropriate so it can either plug into a um, an external supply like that one there um, a 6 volt battery or a um, 7.2 volt battery and it should even run off a 5 volt USB power bank. So I'll just make up adapter cables for whatever's the most convenient power source. Uh, the other thing I've done is, if you remember my keys and my key mechanism, how it might be a bit tricky to see, but in the top there, there's actually a little printed circlet. And when the key is all the way up, that fits into that little pocket there between the, the very top of the keyboard and this little base plate. Um, what I found was that my little circlips were just a little bit too big. And as the key came up, it would, it would spring back up and the circlip would rub on the inside of that hole and it would make the key a little bit sticky. It could, it could just feel a bit sticky right as you pushed it down at about that point. So I reprinted the circlips and made them smaller um, so they don't interfere with the side of the hole. And so now the key mechanism is much smoother. You can see the, the keys there. Um, of course, I still need to make all the key shafts. Um, I have made all the key tops now. 
um, I went through and, and did all of those and I did order the um, the aluminium rod I need to make the rest of the shafts that also makes the standoffs for things like the the plug board at the back uh, what else have we done so if we turn this around which is a bit tricky because I'm not on my little rotating table but you can see in here the lamp board has these plastic feet at the bottom and these are also uh, the spring holders so inside here just there is a little a uh, little spring and that's what is pulling the this compensator bar back up after you press the key so I finally solved the problem of having springs pinging off and going up the vacuum cleaner by doing this uh, there's one on this side and one on the other side of course so if we um, oh you can see here the just the extra step this is this is like a facade piece that clips screws onto the front of the lamp board panel um, of course the lamp board unclips I can't really do it now at the moment everything is loose no, none of this is actually attached this is all just sort of floating so everything moves around um, I still need to get the aluminium base plate and then everything will be bolted down the other thing I have done is I've ordered some wire because I'm getting quite close to being able to start wiring all of this up now of course there's a hell of a lot of wiring in here so I've gone for a 30 AWG silicone coated wire which should be nice and thin and also very flexible uh, I can get away with such a thin gauge wire because only one bulb is ever lit at a time and there's not much current going through it so thin wire will work fine what I'm actually going to do is treat each of these parts as a separate module so the keyboard will be one module the lamp board another module and the entry wheel here will be the third module and they'll all be wired up individually and have connectors on the ends of the wires so that I can disconnect things and um, treat them as individual little little units and to connect them up I'm going to be using these um, D sub connectors so these are 26 way connectors uh, they're actually I think they're DA 26s they're called and because I'm not actually going to be plugging these in and out all the time it's just just for when I'm building it and testing it um, I went with the cheapest ones I could find from RS and they're actually called um, the brand name is Arsman if you believe that um, they were only a dollar something each so I've got uh, male and female of course so I can connect things up um, I went through and figured out the best way to do the wiring you you end up with two wiring looms coming out of the keyboard uh, one goes to the lamp board and then uh, there's also to the entry wheel and to the plug board so there's those four main pieces of wiring as well as all the wiring inside the rotors of course but that will be done separately um, I think that's more or less it at the moment um, I'll ah, the other thing I need to do is as I say I'm printing the the little holder for the two spare rotors and you can see at the back of the lamp board there are these little tabs uh, the the um, plug board will go at the back here and there'll be a cover that I need to design and print that goes over the top and that has the, the slots so that the the thumb wheels of the rotors will stick through and the little windows so that you can see which which letter is up at the the topmost position uh hopefully i'll be able to do that soon